Hey, poker people, it's Sky Matsuhashi, and this is the Smart Poker Study Podcast. I hope you caught last week's Q&A episode number 164, my answer regarding the color coding scheme that I use for my VPIP statistic. It should help you improve your HUD for optimal opponent understanding and exploitation. Alrighty, it's poker study time, y'all. Thanks for joining me for some enlightening poker talk. Thanks also for telling a poker pal, a poker maid, a poker chum of yours. Um, Thanks for telling about this show. And I rely on you to help spread the word. And you are doing it marvelously. Please keep it up. And speaking of keeping it up, my Patreon supporters are keeping it up month after month, and I'm seeing new supporters every week. Um, I really do love it. I want to say a very special thank you to my newest patron, Roland Mueller. Thank you very much, Roland. I love putting the show together for y'all from week to week. My time in putting it together is supported by everyone on Patreon, and I truly appreciate it. Your support shows me that you enjoy the show and that you'll want it to keep on keeping on. If you'd like to find out how you can support the show through Patreon, go to patreon.com, that's P-A-T-R-E-O-N dot com slash smart poker study. There are different levels of support with different rewards attached. And last week, I sent out the November Rewards podcast, which was about the power of betting, and I also sent out the rewards training video, which showed how to create a double barrel report in Poker Tracker 4. So once you begin your support on Patreon, you'll get the current month's reward as well as access to the archive of all past patron-only content. For just a few dollars a month, which is less than a buy-in for many of you, you will support the show and receive some valuable poker content in return. So once again, visit patreon.com slash smartpokerstudy to start that support. Okay, it is about that time we talk some poker mindset. Today is class two in the 10th and final minimum effective dose. Please visit the show notes page for everything I discussed today, along with screenshots and links at www.smartpokerstudy.com slash pod165. Well, it's that time, mateys. Gambate! This is damn exciting stuff. So like I said in that last episode, all this mindset talk is from a working man's perspective. I am telling you what works for me and what I enjoy doing to keep focused and in strong poker mindset at the tables. If different things work for you and I don't mention them here, please drop me a line and let me know because I enjoy learning from you just as much as I enjoy teaching you what I know. That last mindset episode number 163, it was about everything I do pre-session to get ready for what I'm discussing today, your in-game mindset. My in-game mindset is one that I've been working on for a long time. In every session I play, I strive for the stars, and in doing so, I occasionally hit the stars, but quite often I land on the moon. Sometimes I don't even leave the atmosphere. Um, I know that sounds a little cliche, but that's the goal. Shoot for a game mindset every single time. And I want to be honest with you and tell you that it doesn't work 100% of the time for me. I can very easily go on tilt and start spewing chips when a bad beat happens or things just don't go my way. I can sometimes get so angry that without thinking, I just close every table I'm on and I shut down the software then and there. Those are the kinds of reactions I'm trying to avoid by working on my mindset with a good warm-up pre-session and by trying to continue this focus in session. In order to stay focused and play my A game every single time, I have a four-part mindset goal when I play poker. I remember this with a four-letter word, PREP, as in prepare, P-R-E-P. Each letter stands for a mindset aspect that I'm striving for. Let me give you the list here, and then I'll dive deeper into each one. The first P is present in the situation. R is results don't matter. E is an EV mindset. And P, the final P, is patience is rewarded. So let me dive into each of these individually. That first P was present in the situation. So I always want to be present in the situation and fully engaged every time I play. I ditch the distractions so I can be fully tuned into the action so I can make the best plays and take advantage of my opponent's weaknesses. To do this, I need to know my opponents at each table and also how each individual table is flowing. Y'all know that you can be on six different tables online and each is playing differently. Maybe loose, tight, aggressive, passive. Uh, The same thing goes for you live players. In a card room full of 10 tables, I'm sure you can stand right in the middle, look around, and 
just by observing some of the action, even just looking at the players on the tables, you know which tables to avoid and which to salivate over. Another aspect to being present is to be attuned to my own emotions and how I'm playing. If things are flowing and I'm making great reads and decisions, that's a money-making situation to be in. But if I'm feeling rushed uh, or aggravated or angry and tilty, I'll be making bad decisions and losing money. Noticing this C game level of play is the first step in turning it around or ending the session early so I don't lose any more. Following the P in prep is R, which stands for results don't matter. This is probably the hardest mindset shift that I have to make every session. I'm a poker player, so I want to make money every time I play. But I know that's not going to happen. Sometimes I win, sometimes I lose. I know this intellectually, but I can succumb to anger when I do lose some money. Remember how a logic statement is part of each of my warm-ups? Sometimes my logic statement is very simple. Something like, results don't matter, it's the long run and making positive EV decisions that do matter. Telling myself things like this doesn't always help to keep my mind off of results, but it never hurts. Following the R in prep is E, which stands for EV mindset. So EV means expected value. It's the value of your decision in the long run if you can make it over and over again. There's positive EV or winning plays, neutral EV or break even plays, and negative EV or losing plays. Of course, we're always striving to make the positive EV winning plays. Having an EV mindset means you're doing more than just playing your hand in the board. It means you are thinking about those two things, but you're also thinking about your opponent, their range, the effective stacks, the player images involved, uh, the exact situation that you're in right now, and many other things. When you put all of this together, an EV mindset is striving to make great decisions that take advantage of any opportunities present. If the situation is perfect for a 3-bet bluff with Jack-7 suited, then I make the bluff. If I know my opponent will only call a one-third pot value bet, then I make it one-thirds pot, even though I might want to get more out of him. If I do something different due to greed or fear or whatever, then I'm not acting with an EV mindset. Recognizing situations and acting on them are two different things. A player who is present will spot the situation. And if they're in an EV mindset, they'll act on it. That's where you want to be. That's the sweet spot. The final P in prep is patience is rewarded. How many times have you tried to force the action? For me, thousands of times. I can't even count the number of times. For example, I'm dealt ace eight suited and I flop the nut flush draw. Great, but I can't tell you how many times I've decided to get super aggressive and commit my whole stack on the flop in these spots. I just wanna win this hand so bad. Maybe I'm being results oriented when that happens, but I wanna win so bad that I'm willing to call way too loosely or bet too aggressively and just commit everything on a draw. When this happens, it's a clear sign that I'm not being patient. When I am playing patiently, I'm able to spot profitable situations and control myself. I focus on my opponent, their range, the odds of me hitting my hand, and the pot odds I'm being offered. When I'm like this, I can make sound, rational decisions. If I'm committing my stack, it's because I've got a superior hand, an incredible draw, or tons of fold equity. If I'm folding, it's because I'm beat and I can't get my opponent to fold. I believe that patience at the table is often rewarded. I've lost far too many tournaments by playing too aggressively. Conversely, there's been so many times I've made the money or the final table due to patience. When I'm patient and my opponents are not, they're doing my work for me by making mistakes and getting knocked out. I'm being rewarded because I remained calm and collected at important stages of the tournament. So the next time you're playing a poker session, remember to prep, P-R-E-P -E for success. Be present in the situation. Remember that results don't matter. Have an EV mindset and patience is rewarded for those who don't force the action and take advantage of your opponent's mistakes. Today's podcast is brought to you by Audible. Get a free audiobook download and 30-day free trial at audibletrial.com smartpokerstudy. 
They have over 180,000 titles to choose from for your iPhone, Android, Kindle, or MP3 player, including both of my books, How to Study Poker Volumes 1 and 2. And if you're looking for poker content from others, Audible also has Tommy Angelo's book, Elements of Poker. I got it. Haven't started listening yet, but I got it. I'll get started on it next week. Uh, they also have Andy Ware's book, Artemis. He's the guy that wrote The Martian, and I actually bought Artemis just the other day, too. That'll be the next fiction book after I listen to the nonfiction elements of poker. So visit audibletrial.com slash smartpokerstudy to start your free trial and get your free book. And speaking of books, I would love to read a killer review by John J. Coveney uh, for How to Study Poker Volume 2. He gave it five stars. Wow! And this is what he says. I have to say, wow, I don't write very many reviews, but this one or this is one of the exceptions. Sky Matsuhashi is now my favorite poker author. I have been playing poker for over 25 years. For 10 of those years, I've been serious about studying it and winning. I have bought and studied dozens of poker books over those 10 years. My game improved steadily for the first two, but then plateaued for the last eight. I have been studying volume one for two months. I have seen more improvement in those two months than in the last eight years. I just read How to Study Poker Volume 2. In Volume 1, Mr. Matsuhashi gives tools and techniques on how to study poker. In Volume 2, he shows how he used the techniques in Volume 1 to improve his own game. He gives his own hand examples, statistics, and even his own study notes to confirm that he uses what he teaches and that the reader can do it too. I can hardly wait for Volume 3! That is such an awesome review. Thank you so much, Mr. Coveney. I really do appreciate it. And for everyone else who has bought the book and not left a review, please do so. Spread the word, baby. And two quick shout outs right here. Keith Feifel picked up Poker Tracker 4 from me and received the smart HUD. So thank you very much, Keith. And Senior or Senorita Anonymous, don't know which, um, actually purchased the Smart HUD directly from me. So hopefully Mr. or Mrs. Anonymous is kicking some butt at the tables. Hopefully they're not taking too much money from me or from Keith Feifel. But hey, thank you guys very much for supporting. And if you want to support the show, just go to the show notes page for different ways to do so. Alrighty, back to class, poker people. Now let's discuss some of the active things I do in-game to help me stay focused and within a game mindset. First up, practice a strategy. So during my warm-up, I decide upon some kind of strategy to keep in mind and practice as I play. Here's a great quote from Jim Quick. That's a small departure from what we've heard a million times. He says, practice makes permanent. And I believe this is more true than practice makes perfect. I'll say it again. Practice makes permanent. The more you work on your three-bet game, for example, the more likely these skills will be ingrained in your skill set, and then you start acting upon them without really even thinking about it. The more you focus on and practice check raises, the better you'll become at it. The more you practice river value bets, the better you'll become at it. So take whatever skill you're studying off the felt and find ways to practice it in session. Next up, speak through your actions. Some of the best sessions I ever had was when I recorded game tape and I spoke through every action I took. The reason is because as you speak through your actions, you're forced to verbalize the logic that you're using before you click a button. So before I click call, I speak through the reason I'm making that decision. Before I click raise, I say what hands I'm getting value out of. And I do the same before I check or fold. I verbalize why it is or why I'm doing what I'm doing. Speaking through my actions is the best way to keep me focused on the task at hand, which is making money through positive EV decisions. This same idea is why many Twitch streamers like Jamie Staples, Bet on Drew, and Jason Somerville are successful. They're constantly explaining their thought process to the audience. Sure, it's entertaining for one thing, but on another level, the audience is there to learn from them. They've got to give good educational content as well. They've got to justify their actions. When you record game tape, pretend there's an audience hanging on your every word and action. Another thing I like about game tape is that it can force you to remain calm. You know that old saying, never let them see you sweat? Well, for me, if I pretend I'm playing to an audience, it helps me keep my emotions in check because the last thing I want is for them to see me get angry and lose a buy-in or two because of tilt. Next up, smile. So I often throw a smile on my face as I'm playing. Whether I'm on camera or off camera, I'm smiling because I know the power of a smile. A smile naturally affects your mindset. It's very difficult to remain angry or to go on tilt 
when you're holding that humongo smile on your face. Next up, use an uncomfortable tag in Poker Tracker 4. So this is something I've recently started doing. Poker Tracker 4 allows you to create any tag you want. So I made one that simply says uncomfortable. As I'm playing, I use this tag every time I find myself in an uncomfortable spot. Maybe it's playing out of position in a multi-way pot, uh, three betting from the blinds, facing a C-bet, facing a river donk bet, whatever it is. Tagging these hands allows me to put it out of my mind for the time being and continue to stay focused on the task at hand. Later in my study session, I'll pull up the uncomfortable hands I played and review them to figure out why I was uncomfortable. Next up, music. So Dennis Rodman once said, music soothes my savage beast. I got a beast in me running wild. So I feel the same way sometimes. And that beast's name is Tilt Monstrosity. Music can help uh, keep my emotions in check. So I'll listen to Baroque era classical music or music with a steady beat and no lyrics. I'll sometimes listen to 80s synth wave or music composed by Howard Shore. He's the guy that made all the uh, Lord of the Rings, um, uh, uh, music for the Lord of the Rings. I'll sometimes ask Alexa to play music from John Williams as well. If you don't know who he is, just play one song and you'll instantly know what he's famous for. Next up is clearing that desktop. One thing I like to do is hide all the items on my Windows desktop. I right click and deselect show desktop items and then BAM! Those distractions are removed. Something else, I always have a paper and a pen in front of me to take notes as well. Sometimes as I play, Something interesting will come to mind, and instead of Googling it or opening up Facebook or email or whatever, I'll make a note to follow up on it after my session. I also try to be ready for tilty things to happen. There are a ton of things that set me on tilt or distract me at the tables, and I try to have a plan for each when they eventually occur. One thing I suffer from is big hand blindness. I see a big hand like pocket aces, pocket kings, or queens, and instead of seeing my opponent or strategy or the best way to approach the hand, all I'm seeing are dollar signs. When this happens, I take a deep breath and I tell myself, play this hand well, make good decisions, and don't think about winning a massive pot. Having a plan in place will save you many headaches at the tables. Next up, five minute questions. And I talked about this in the last episode about warm ups, but I really do like to have a five minute question and my Tabata timer going every session I play. In the last session I played, my five minute question was, who is my target at the table? Nice and simple. When the timer went off every five minutes, I asked and answered it for each of the four tables I was playing. This kept me focused on who was at my tables and I believe my play and strategies were better because of this awareness. And one thing here for tournament players, you guys have a few extra things to worry about. You have to think about the blind and ante structure. You have to think about shrinking stack sizes, not just yours, but your opponents. There's bubble considerations. There's in the money considerations. You have to think about the, uh, uh, the approach to the final table, you know, when you're down to three and then two tables. And then of course you have to think about final table play. So getting back to being present in the situation, you've got to be aware of these factors. Your opponents will be adjusting their play based on these things. So you have to be ready to respond. There's also ICM considerations of getting knocked out just before the bubble bursts or even lasting just a little bit longer to make that pay jump. Stay focused on what's going on around your tourney table, not just on what your opponents are doing. Challenge! Once again, I've got to say it. If you listen to the episode and don't put something from it to use in your next play or study session, you're completely wasting your time. So having said that, Here's my challenge to you for this episode. Choose two or three things from the list of actions I take at the tables and practice them for yourself. Remember, practice makes permanent, so get to practicing. Now it's your turn to take action and dippy dippy do something positive for your poker game. Now get it on. This episode isn't complete until you head to the show notes page at www.smartpokerstudy.com slash pod165. Go there for screenshots and links to everything discussed today and to discover ways in which you can support the podcast and keep me keeping on. 
Thank you very much for lending me your ears today. If you can type the word Smart Poker Study, you can find me on Twitch, YouTube, Facebook, Instagram, Twitter, and now Anchor. You can also hear the show on your Amazon Echo device. Just tell it to play the Smart Poker Study podcast on TuneIn. And of course, send me those emails. we got a Q&A coming up soon. Uh, send them to sky at smartpokerstudy.com. Alrighty, poker peeps, next week in episode 166, I will hold the third class in the Mindset MED when I discuss my mindset during my off-the-felt study sessions. The best advertising is word of mouth, so thank you for sharing the show with your poker chums. Your sharing and caring is what helps us grow. Until next time, study smart, play much, and make your next session the best one yet. I want to